Hello everyone, today I am going to show you the making of this warm ochre with rusty orange gown. Here is the design sketch of the gown and uh, all through this video I will be using these images to show you where I'm at during the process. I'm Marjolein Turin, designer of Somnia Romantica. I'm the sole person behind this fashion label. Here on YouTube I show what I do. Kind disclaimer, I'm a small independent fashion designer living from my fashion designs. Please do not copy my designs. Seeing it as inspiration is absolutely okay though. Note this is a peek over my shoulder, it's not a tutorial. I'm self-taught, I work in an unconventional, often intuitive way. I have little knowledge of official techniques. Okay, now we got that out of the way, let's start with the video. Uh, we start with the cutting of the big giant bell sleeves. Um, in this case I use freehand cutting as I have in my head what I want the sleeve to look like and uh, cut the fabric accordingly. And then for the second part I lay this one on top of the fabric and cut the same for because of course uh, it's important that it becomes symmetrical. Then onto the train. This is a thick autumn lace. I am using myself as a reference how I want the train to fall, how long it should be, where it should start. By the way, I use yacht varnish for my table. That is why it's so smooth. I start with folding, cutting a piece and folding it uh, in the width instead of the length. This way I get the length and the width required for this train. And I estimate how the angle should be. <laughs> And I start calculating it. Think, think. And there you go. Readjusting it. And here I constantly make sure the radius is the right one at the right place. And that angle was a bit too much, so I adjust it. Then on to the skirt and part of bodice. Taking this lovely warm ochre ribs velvet. Thinking and then drawing out the lines, cutting it out and onto the puff sleeves. I'm drawing this in the way that the puff sleeves has horizontal ribs. Uh, the most of the dress is cut in a diagonal way. Marking the mid onto the back part. Here I have to adjust a base pattern that I often use as you can see and I adjust the lines. This is often um, a lot of thinking but also a bit intuitive and I uh, make the lines with chalk on the pattern so I can use it for this one occasion and then I will uh, it will fade onto the shoulder parts. They also will be this ribbed velvet with the stripes, the ribbed pattern in the width, horizontal. Uh, the other side of the skirt, patting it because it makes funny hand dimples and then making the upper part and cutting it out. Onto the biceps. I first thought I would do this in oak. So again, a lot of uh, recalculating for the, for the lace front, uh, the lace part of the neckline, carefully cutting it. And the same goes for the back. Be a nice big lace back panel. And uh, the last. Mm, there you go. Tiny lace inserts because I thought that would be cute. Just cutting this as I think logical. And I see a few pieces were omitted from this uh, recording. The bust part and the uh, lower part of the skirt. And you will see them during the sewing. Onto the sewing, we will start with the big sleeves. And this is the part that goes around the elbow. Then we go to the M, speeding it up 10 times. <laughs> then onto the train, same story, story, lots of making a nice hem with the searcher machine. This all to make sure the fabric won't fray. I'm using, by the way, black uh, searcher uh, uh, yarn. This is because uh, a thread, because all the decorations will be in black. Onto the sewing machine, pleating broad black vintage lace onto the giant bell sleeves. I'm Pleating pleats of about half an inch with about half an inch again space in between the pleats. And I will speed this up. There you go. I pleat and this is a never ending story so I won't show all of it. Uh, at the end 
I'm showing a very fine and very dense zigzag. Half a millimeter in length and two millimeter in width. And then I cut away the pendant fabric. Then I'm making the final pleats and one sleeve is done. At the other side, I am sewing this nice fine scallop lace, again vintage lace. And I'm owning, only pleating the uh, smaller part of it so I see all the scallops fully. After many, 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 many pleats, I'm cutting it a small part and folding it together with the small part of the first lace scallop wrap it. And there you go, this bell sleeve done. Uh, for the train, I'm also using the broad black vintage lace, um, making sure I'm sewing it uh, with the right size up. I'm sewing it from the inside, so the inside of these is also look, look nice. This way it will always look nice, even if it folds a bit or if you see the inside of some. Pleat, 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 millions of pleats. And then at some point I get to the last part of it. And there I have to make the curve so that it flows nicely into the start of the uh, train. So I make sure the lace goes, flows from very broad to smaller and smaller towards the end. Then at the other side the same fine vintage scallop lace with the same style of pleating. And with my other hand I'm making sure that the other lace at the other side of the... Always make sure that you're double checking if anything else is already attached. Make sure that it won't fold or get pleated the wrong way while sewing something else. And here we get at the end. I'm pleating the other way now because from the mid I went pleating in the other direction for the flow. Then I am sewing, uh, putting the back panel door the search. <laughs> I'm putting the back panel through the search here. Um, yeah, there are a lot of little parts in this dress and they all need to firm. Here is the feller, the, the velvet back panel. This is the seam to which I want to attach the uh, lace panel. And this will be the seam for the skirt, for the skirt part. Uh, the shoulder panels, I'm going to attach the mini lace detail to it. So cute. I'm happy I did that because it's such a little detail but it's the dress more fun. And then we will go to the bust part, uh, the seams of the bust. These are very important seams because they uh, curve from the full bust to under the bust. They are derived from a Victorian pattern and I use this type of seams all the time. Also giving the heart shaped part a seam. Uh, then the puff sleeve, I'm sewing the feller onto the lace onto the, the the rusty lace but then i decided i'm also going to try out another style of sleeve because i was not decided on it yet marking the mid so i know where to pleat the other direction and there i am pleating the other option with the lace sleeve and the black bicep i was comparing and i decided to go for the black with lace one then sewing the lace neckline part and the bust, the, the, the heart shaped line together. This is always tricky because it's a curved line and yeah, it's a lot of fumbling to make sure it lands on the right place. Sewing the back part and the, the lace and the velvet back part together, making sure it's exactly at the right place. That's the most important. It's very easy at the mid back or to, to, to place it just the wrong way, just exactly wrong and the other side and of course this has to be symmetrical obviously thinking a lot like am i placing it right then i'm using this lovely lace trim and i sew it on top of the searches a sturdy embroidered trim i make a pleat in the mid a perfect v in the mid and then go and then i Give it an extra seam to make it nice and flat. For the shoulder parts, I use another lace, this cute pointy lace, circly pointy. It's a very stiff lace, so it's a bit tricky to sew it in a curved way, but you can always manipulate the fabric a bit, as the uh, part with the pointy, the pointy part can be fumbled a bit, so you, you can use the, that for the inner side of the curve, making it symmetrical for the other side. And now I'm and now I am going to sew the fastening. This is the shoulder part and here comes the hooks and the eyelets go onto the neckline first part. 
I love this kind of trim because it will take ages to do this by hand. So if you can find it, I do recommend it a lot. Um, making it again symmetrical for the other side. And then I'm going to sew the mid front and of the skirt. And I first give it a seam by the sewing machine to make sure it stays put when I put it through the searcher. Of course, the mid front seam is very important. Here I'm sewing the, the, the shoulder part and the back part together. A bit of a tricky thing. Also exciting because now I'm going to see if my pattern works. Sometimes you think a certain style will work and then when you put it on the dress form it goes a bit wonky. Hemming the upper part of the velvet skirt and bodice so I can sew it onto the upper part. And also for the other side. <clears throat> Back to the fastening. I am, uh, because I have taken away a few of the clips, I am now making sure to make the seams firm so it won't fray. Otherwise you may, may lose other hooks or eyelets and you don't want that. Then I go to the back and so trim onto the part where the shoulder meets the back panel. Again the cute pointy trim. I thought it was perfect for this job and a second line to make sure it's put. And again this is stiff, stiff trim and very stretchy fabric and so a bit tricky. These are all conflicting fabrics and trims that I'm sewing together. Also the, 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 the autumny lace of the back panel is non-stretch while the, the velvet is two-way stretch and very fluffy so everything in this dress is not agreeing with each other. Here I'm sewing the pointy lace around the neckline. Again I'm using the, the straight part as the, the uh, lead for it and then the pointy part can be for the, for the adjusting, for the curving, both outward and inward. So that's the trick to use the stiffest part for the, for the prime line and the other one for the curved. If that makes any sense, otherwise you can say it in the comments. Um, here I am sewing the hook, the, the, the eye part of the, the eye and hooklet trim onto the neckline. And again decorated it with the cute trim, making sure it was not wobbly. And then this trim goes around the puff sleeves where the puff meets the biceps. It's the broad trim that I used before on the back, where the back panel of lace met the feather. Then I'm attaching for a part the bodice at the side seams, the front and the back. To, oh, this is so messy to watch. <laughs> It took me a minute to figure out what I was doing. But this is also, uh, here I am uh, making the armhole. This is why I uh, sew the back and front together so I could make the armholes. I'm now first putting them through the searcher before going on here. I'm also making this side seam for a part and again the armhole. So yes, by now I know what I'm doing. I mean, back then I knew what I was doing. It's hard to see, but yeah. Um, yeah, then I'm putting the side seam of the upper arm together. And I wanted it to be a bit smaller, so to match the proportions of the bodice more. There you go. I often give a bit leeway to the pattern when I cut the biceps, so I can adjust it to the right size. Here I am inserting the arms. I'm sewing the, the arms onto the bodice and from here I will be pleating it. I uh, put this part at a sort of uh, uh, double speed so you can still very well see what I'm doing. But I'm making very dense pleats and just fumbling the whole puff sleeve from halfway from the mid shoulder I'm pleating the other way around. Now I will sew the uh, back panel and the skirt together. The, the skirt in this uh, design obviously has also a part of the waistline, the lower waist. But I'm calling it the skirt. Here you see how I start in the mid and from the mid I go one direction and the other direction to make sure the fit at the mid is right because that's so important. Then I'm sewing the bust line onto the front skirt. Same method, starting in the mid and from there to the sides. 
And then I'm going for the side seams. So I'm finally going on from the bodice, which I first sew partially together. And now and I can go all the way down. There I make quite a cut in the uh, bodice because that was better for the flow. Um, then I go on with the lower overskirt. This is again in the nice Ausbrenner fabric, which is a sort of rusty orange almost a bit towards Brieg and first I sew the lower seam which is many 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 yards as you can see then here I am pleating the train because this will have to be heavily pleated before I sew it onto the dress I make this piece as pleats as dense as possible so there's no space in between the pleats this means you need three times as much fabric uh, because every pleat consists of three layers of fabric. So one yard of dense pleats means three yards of fabric in the width. And here I'm making pleats in the overskirt, the Ausplanner skirt, which goes under the train and over the Feller skirt. So this is end, last nice pleat. And then, yeah, this is sort of stage where I was and I apparently felt compelled to uh, film it. Sort of becoming a dress and those are the sleeves. The bodice is sort of starting to look like a bodice and now I uh, ah, I'm making the line or where the uh, skirt part, the, 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 the Ausbrenner needs to be attached, this one. And I'm sewing it onto that line. And this is terrible fumbling and I had a lot of footage of this and I'm only uh, inserting a little bit because it's just <laughs> it's just a lot of this. And then at the skirt, the, 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 the velvet skirt, at the or feather skirt at the bottom, I am pleating this cute lace. Because of course, if you would lift the train and the overskirt, you would have see a nice underskirt. And then the same lace goes onto the inside of the Ausbrenner skirt part. Pleat, 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 pleat. I don't want to know how many pleats this dress has. Um, yeah, back to the fastening, there I was already starting to sew some clasps on. This is always so much work. There you go, in and out and in and out and in and out. And meanwhile I am watching YouTube videos and drinking lots of tea. This is uh, awesome actually, it's a sort of my, my zen moment when there are no machines rattling and I can just watch a nice video and start hand sewing. And uh, this is always one of the bigger parts of the job because I'm always very principal wanting it to stay put and, and be symmetrical, etc. Here I'm sewing the neckline. First it's going to the searcher. It's for both the back and the front. This is the, 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 the front heel. And for some reason I then do the upper part of the velvet skirt. I have to say I, I always, I'm not a very linear type of person as you may have known but well in the end the whole job gets done and then we go to the lace on the hem where the skirt is pleated onto the feather skirt again all with the same lovely vintage lace here i have to go all the way down to the hem again that's the hard part when the dress is getting when the dress is coming together it's very nice but it makes the sewing harder because you have all this abundant fabric floofing around your machine. <laughs> Here I'm going to do the line around the bust line, under the bust line, up to the back panels with a cute pleated lace. This one is not vintage, it's uh, one of my favorite laces because you can use it for about everything. It's small and it's fluffy and soft. It's a polyamide, I believe. And there is the, the mid of the back, so there I have to be, oh no mid of the front so I have to be very careful that the pleat gets nice and symmetrical there and yeah aha so I started at the mid back and then I was pleating all around to the all the way around to the mid of the bust line and right under the bust and then back to the back and here I am pleating the same lace onto the neckline to make a nice defined but still subtle black trim around the neck and it's also very comfy to wear you don't want prickly stuff on your neck. And from this is on the inside and on the outside I will be do the lace trim. The same that I used for the biceps and the back. So I'm first sewing it 
onto it and making sure it's uh, because this has a pattern and is a very prominent place I make sure it is totally symmetric so the pattern is from the mid to the sides the same and ends at the same place and so you also know when you got the pattern on the lace symmetrical on the trim that your uh, that the lengths are also the same as long as you have a trim that is consistent in in length and there goes my label and I'm almost done I still had to attach the white bell sleeves but that was the only thing so I thought it was reasonable to attach the label already I wanted to save the bell sleeves for the last because I already had enough fabric going around but hey then I was done you can see that it's although elaborate it's also a very for my uh, uh, well in my book a, a quite sleek design I wanted to keep it a bit simple in its form and make it very flowy and here you can see the the shape very well and yeah that was it so i hope you enjoyed this video i will soon make new footage i have some very nice ideas for new gown designs and dramatic designs i hope it uh, was a bit easier to follow with all the images that i inserted and um let me know if you like this way of portraying it yeah i will see you in the next video and of course if you wish to support this channel please hit like or subscribe or leave comments or whatever and see you the next time bye bye Thank you.